Today, our champion, Bruno DePeo of East Boston, faces the challenge of Billy Stanley of North Reading, Massachusetts, on Candlefin Bowling. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and as always, I'm glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candleton Bowling. Total pinfall determines our winner. Each of our bowlers takes home a permanent souvenir. These are provided by the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. Each will take home some money. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. 700 of that goes to the winner, 350 to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and if they tie, we split that at $25 apiece. There is also an extra $100 for anybody going over 400 and Bruno knows all about that because he had a big, big day. If you missed it, I'm sorry, it was a big day last week as he moved into our championship show. And uh, there are other opportunities. Most of you are familiar with the three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spares, $50, each subsequent uh, consecutive mark, $50. But I'll remind you, right now let's talk to today's bowlers, shall we? And first of all, well, welcome back, Billy. Uh, you were on once before. You prepared now this time. You're going to knock this guy off? Oh, uh, yeah. I feel a little better this time. I feel like we can do it, maybe. Yeah, well, you know, know, you got the first one out of the way. Yeah, a better day. Well, he, to me. He, uh, well he was on the uh, once before, and then I'm sure, uh, Bruno, there is, uh, I'd, I'd have jitters if I had to go up here and do it the first time. Yeah, yeah. You, were, you, you seem to be much calmer last week. Oh, yeah, because, you know, once you're on it a couple, like once. Yeah get the feel for it. You're not, you're not as nervous as the first time. You just go out there and just bowl. Boy, you did bowl, too. And, uh, and think, think if you hadn't had that one lob, how would it work? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that you did it. And uh, and right now you're in fifth place for our championship yeah. show. So it holds on. So you got to cross your fingers oh, now yeah. and hope that nobody knocks you off. All right. You're both fine bowlers. We're looking forward to a good match. We'll get underway right after this. <laughs> We're getting underway with Billy Stanley on the line. That one drifted off to the right a bit. Billy has a league average of 118. Very close to getting them all, but he has left a pair. It's the two and five. A nine box. Billy's high single is 186. His high triple, 479. He still has four, three in a triangle off to the right. Three, five, six, plus seven. It's a seven. Billy's roll-off score was 653, and he's representing both Baldinelli's Bowl Away and the Candlewood Lanes in North Reading. Right now, you're looking at our defending champion, Bruno DeFeo of East Boston. A couple of more fell. Now he's faced with a good spare leave of the 4-7. His current... League average is 124. Made it. Except the seven. Nine pin drop. Off to a fine start. Last week, against Steve Reno, he opened with a 145. Followed that with a 155. And he makes a spare. And then rolled a 125 third string for a total of 425. And that was one better than Joe Ashline, who was in fifth place for our championship show. Now Billy Stanley. So frustrating, and only in this game of bowling can you do that. Punch out one by just missing the head pin. Oh. 
to seven. The one, two, nine, and ten with wood behind the one and two. Can he get it? Oh, he just missed the head pin. Waiting for some wood to settle down. Our two jackpots now are at 300 for the home viewer and 800 for the high low. Nice shot for the 10. Hoping now for three marks in a row and $50 in bonus money is our defending champion, Bruno DeFeo. It's a thin hit. Four is the fill. Ooh, no bonus money here. He did well last week. He picked up, in addition to the 700 for Winnie, he also had $450 in bonus money. A seven box. Al Giglio, as usual, keeping score on the electronic scoreboard. Scott Philbrick keeping score on the big board. Ralph Stewart in his usual spot right on the lob line. He's our referee and lob line judge. Phil Rubin, our producer and director. Too bad, he couldn't get at it. The wood was a roadblock. Now he gets it for a 10. After four boxes of the opening string, Bruno DeFeo, our defending champion, is leading 50 to 33. Half Worcester right side punching out the three and nine for Billy. Almost got them all. Left the six and seven. To nine. Bill was on once before back in 1988. And uh, he drew as an assignment trying to beat Tom Olster. Too bad he missed the opportunity here to possibly convert. He had a very respectable 351, but Tom Oster rolled a 398. Defending champion Bruno DeFeo. Is it going to come back? Nope, he missed the head pin, got everything else, the head pin's still standing. Surprise, he missed that single pin, the head pin. There it is for a 10. Our crew today is Skip Peabody, Doug Dyke, K. 
Ken Sullivan, Dan McClellan. He's looking now at one, two, and seven with wood between the two and the seven. Two pieces of wood. Once again, missed the head pin. And it's still there. Eighteen pin lead after six for our defending champion. Two, two full on the head pin that time for our challenger, Billy Stanley. It's a ten. Spread Eagle, our defending champion Bruno DeFeo was having a little difficulty hitting the head pin previously. He came too full on it that time and got the spread eagle. He got the right side, moved a piece of wood over. It, in turn, moved the four pin but did not knock it down. So you still have the two, four, seven now with wood in between four and seven. Took the wood out of there and nothing else, so it's a seven box. Strike. So we have strike opposite strike. Now let's see what Billy Stanley can do in filling his strike. He's got eight on the first. Can he get this? Yes! A spare on his strike. Big eight and a chance for another. Seven pin toppled. It looked for a moment as though it wouldn't go. So fifty dollars in bonus money, at least, for Billy Stanley, as he has three marks in his final three boxes of the first string. Now let's see what he can do here. Eight more. One seventeen. His league average is one eighteen. Bruno DeFeo's first bonus ball on uh, the strike gets three. He got the rest of them.
106 right now, plus what he rolls on this ball. Eight. One twenty two. Let's see what he can get here. Oh! What a great try. Got the ball to move over. It actually touched it twice. Once in front and went into the gutter and came out going back to the pit and touched it and back. But the seven pin stayed up. So, our defending champion wins the. Uh, First string and $50 by six pins, 123 to 117. Middle string, defending champion leads it off. Bruno DeFeo, East Boston. Half Worcester right side, punching out three and nine. Everything down except the 10. In case you might have been wondering, last week when uh, Bruno came to the final box and needed 17 pins, obviously he had to mark and get seven in order to uh, get by Joe Ashline, who had a 124 and was in fifth place for our championship show. Maybe you wonder, supposing he had gotten just six instead of seven and had come in at 124, and they both had 124, how would we break that tie? Tell you in a moment. He's got one, three, no, he doesn't. The three just fell. He has one, seven, and eight. I'll get to that tiebreaker, but not right now. Where do we see whether he makes this fair? Hey! Nope. If there is a tie in the total scores, the following tiebreaker rules will apply. And they are, number one, we go to who had the higher total of marks. And that did it, that would have done it right there had they tied because Bruno had 17 and Joe Ashline had 15 in, in rolling the 125. If they still were tied after that, had the same number of marks, then we would go to the higher total of strikes. If they were still tied after that, then the higher total of bonus pins. Those would be the tiebreaker steps that we would have taken. But we didn't have to because Bruno got seven instead of six to the spill. And they got a 125 to Joe Ashline's 124. Oh, too bad. Billy had a spare leave, but uh, he punched out the uh, object pin, which was a three. It's a nine. One, two, four. That's what he's looking at. Two pull on the head pin. A nine. Bruno is single, employed as a bookkeeper with the Bank of New England. Billy is also single and is employed as a custodian. Yeah. 
I gave you Billy's stats, but I didn't mention Bruno. 124 average, 178 high single, high triple 450, 672 winning his roll off and representing the Central Park lanes of East Boston. Everything down except the 10 pin. It's still there. Now our challenger, Billy Stanley of North Reading. Three, six, ten on the right with wood to the left of it, plus the seven pin standing over on the left side. Seven and ten still there. Basically, he has diamond right plus the 10 pin. In other words, he has the 3, 5, 6, 9, but he also has the 10 pin. 10 pin still there. He got the diamond. It's a 10. It was to fail 123 and Stanley 117 after one, and now after four boxes to the middle, Bruno has added three more. He leaves 3835. Our defending champion. Now looking at 137 and 8. Got the three, but missed the one. Obviously going for the one-three pocket. Got the one, left the seven and eight. That was a thin hit. He did get the head pin, but he has left two, four, five, seven, then a little space, then six and ten. Punched out the two. So there are still five pins standing, and right across it goes four, five, six, and then in back seven and ten. It's a seven box. Billy Stanley leaves just the five and nine. Spear for Billy Stanley. Big eight. The two pins standing are close together. It's the six and ten. For a spare, oh! <laughs> Missed them both. For a ten, yes. Bruno 
to fail. Now he has a spare leave. The two and five with wood between the two and five and one that is in back of the five pin. It is. I know you'll all be happy to know that on both Channel 5 and Channel 40, we'll be back at a regular time next weekend, 12 noon, both Channel 5 and Channel 40. Bruno gets six. No wood to help. He's looking at one, three, six, and seven. Missed the head pin, got the three and six. It's a ten. Now, oh, Billy Stantley, today's challenger. He has wood between the six and ten, but he also on the left has the two, four, seven with no wood. Took out the four, seven. It's a nine. Four horsemen left side, one, two, four, seven. He also has the eight pin in back. Nope, didn't get the head pin or the eight. It's an eight. Billy leading by one pin in this string. Spare Lee for Bruno DeFeo, our defending champion. Wood right in front of the 4 7. He makes it. Time called by Ralph Stewart. Oh. Only four more weeks for our championship show. Remember, August 24th, 6.30 to 8 o'clock, an hour and a half, $20,000 crew value championship show. And this year, a different format. Five will bowl four. That winner will bowl three. That winner will bowl two. And then on up to number one. Five is the fill, and he now looking at one, two, four, six, and ten. A little too full on that head pin. He still has three standing, and Ralph Stewart again calls time. It's an eye. Before you know it, fall will be here. And if you're interested in joining the Candleton Pro Tour, Billy will be facing a diamond on the left side. You can get more information by writing to WCBC Incorporated. Got half of it. Uh, Post Office Box 545, Webster, Massachusetts. 
1570. That's WCBC Incorporated Post Office Box 545, Webster, Massachusetts, 01570. The ladies must have an average of 102 or better, the men 112 or better. And the first Pro Tour tournament is going to be held in September. Four horsemen left side. That's what Billy is looking at right now. Yes! So Billy has a chance now to uh, win this middle string with whatever he is able to pile up. Six or better. Yes! Get nine for a fill. So $50 in bonus money will go to Billy Stanley as he wins the middle string. The score right now, only two pins separating our bowlers. Our defending champion, Bruno DeFeo, is leading by those two pins over Billy Stanley. Billy Stanley, today's challenger. Only two pins separating our bowlers, remember, going into this third string. And he now is looking at a 6, 9, and 7. He didn't, but he didn't hit it. It's an eight. Two, six, seven, and ten, or if you prefer six and ten together over on the right, and two and seven on the left. Wood between two and seven. He got those two. A ten. Next week's challenger will be Joe Willett of Ashburnham. One, three, six, ten on the right, four, seven on the left, and in the back, the nine pin. Right through the open spot. Right through the same spot. So it's a three. Two and nine with wood in between. Nope, he didn't get the two, got the nine. Ten. Our challenger, Billy Stanley, has taken the lead by three. That one broke off to the right on him. He slept with four horsemen left side, plus the five and eight. Still has two four seven standing. After today, there will be four more chances for somebody to knock off Bruno, who is now in the vulnerable spot of number five for our championship show. Yeah. Billy Stanley has just made a spare. Now, 
Now there's some pressure on Bruno. That's a thin hit on the right side. Two, four, five, seven, and eight, six, and ten. And just one more. A five box. Billy Stanley has increased his lead now to six and has a spare in the next box. Everything down except the six pin. He's got it. All right, each of our bowlers now working on a spear. First of all, it'll be Billy. And Billy throws a, a big nine. Four pin for another. Yes. He missed it, missed the pin, but he hit a piece of wood. And the wood was able to knock it down, so he has two in a row. Spread eagle. Just four on this one. Got the right side and also got the two pin. But the four and seven are still there. He's going after those for a ten, and he's got it. Our defending champion has his work cut out for him right now. Here's the fill on his spare. It's a strike. All right, he's answered that. First bonus ball gets him eight. The two pins standing are the six and ten, and there is wood in front of it. And yes, he made it. Another fifty dollars in bonus money. Billy Stanley. Billy comes back with a strike. <laughs> Billy came so close to getting two strikes. The eight pin is still standing. Yes. Now let's see what Bruno can do on this bear. He gets seven. One, two, and four. That's what he's looking at to try to convert. Oh, missed the head pin. Now he gets it for a 10. Two pin lead right now for Billy Stanley, who has a spare in the eighth. Four 
four pins over on the right, three, five, six, and ten. No way. The ten pin stayed up. And remember, he is opposite a spare here. Nine. Billy gets a nine pin drop and he has a single pin, the eight pin, to pick up for another mark. Wood is still rolling. Going after that single pin for another mark. Oh, just missed it. Missed it again. It's a nine. He has left the four horsemen right side plus the five and nine. Six more. One thirty three. For a tie, Bruno must get a 131. One, two, four, six, and ten. No. He must have a triple strike because he needs a 131. So he needs, actually, he needs a double strike and a nine. Unless these pins fall, Billy Stanley is our new champion. So Billy Stanley came from behind and wins another $50 in bonus money by winning the third string by a score of 133 to 112. And uh, the final score is Billy Stanley, our new champion from North Reading, Massachusetts, 357. And Bruno DeFeo, our defending champion, was defeated today by rolling at 338, but he has the consolation of knowing that at the moment he is in fifth place for our championship show, which is scheduled for four weeks from now on August the 24th at 6.30 p.m. So there they are, final score, Stanley 357, DeFeo 338. $300 in our home viewer jackpot. And as you can see, it's beginning to pile up. You know, of course, that we'll empty it out just as soon as we have a winner. I wouldn't mind at all if we had a winner today. Uh, we've had some high scores the last couple of weeks, and they were a little higher than most of the guesses are. Today it's 695. That means 10 pins either side of that would win it, but when I draw the card, even if it's nowhere near that, that person will be rewarded with a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company. All right.
Let's find out now if we have anybody who's near that 695. We'll use the left hand this time and go over here somewhere. All right. From Greenfield, Massachusetts, on Devon Street, Mary Benash, and her guess is 752. So next week it's going to be worth 350. Uh, Billy, would you like 800 dollars? <laughs> All right. Knock down those three pins. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over here. Come up here, Billy. Did you want to bring him up? Okay, fine. Right behind Bruno. Uh, Bruno, ah, if I can handle all this stuff. Bruno, you, you get uh, $350 plus uh, $100 in bonus money, but you uh, right now are in line to come back and see us four weeks from now. It's a pleasure having you. Thanks. And uh, let's see now. Billy, that last, uh, the last time, of course, we, we threw you up against a nice easy one, Tom Ulster, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like uh, but uh, you had a big, big win today, and it was a come-from-behind win, and those, those are, the I think, the best of all. $700 for winning, $150 in bonus money. Uh, Joe Willett, I think you know, is going to be your challenger next week. Who's this guy? Uh, this is my nephew, Billy, William Dowdy. Another Billy. Hi, Billy. I like your hair. Pretty neat there. <laughs> we took him out of a wedding. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, well, listen, uh, we're going to be here, and uh, I know you're going to be here next week, and Joe Willett will be your challenger, and we're going to be on on the regular time on both Channel 5 and Channel 40. See you then. Bye-bye.